Many people are looking for different ways to make their Google Classroom stand out, stand apart from the rest. Because if students have multiple classrooms that they have to be in, they all start to look the same. It's monotonous. Besides the banner that you can change when you get into classwork, it's just the same font, the same colors that goes along with your banner and it can get really, really boring for a student. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is organization. Hopefully you as a teacher have organized your Google Classroom in some sort of way. If you're teaching one subject, it's a little bit easier because you can do it by weeks or by quarters. Here we've done it by weeks. And then also make sure that you number your assignments so that students know the order to go in for that week. If you're teaching multiple subjects, you should do the same thing. Week one, math. Week one, English. And again, number those assignments. So that's a quick organizational tip, but it's not gonna make you stand out in Google Classroom. It's not gonna catch your students' attention. Enter emojis. Let's use emojis to make our assignments stand out, to grab students' attention. And we're gonna use Emoji Keyboard by JoyPixels. And I'll link the video right above us here to how to install JoyPixels and how to use it. So these emojis are available to us to be able to be put into the title of our assignments. So if I want to, I can go to an assignment that I currently have, go to edit, and I can then open up our JoyPixel Chrome extension and find something that would relate to this project. And it says it's copied. You can see that it's here. I can go ahead and place it where I want as well and then hit save. And now when I put it into my Google Classroom, it's gonna grab a little bit more attention. You can have a certain emoji associated with a particular assignment that reoccurs over time. Emojis can also be used as part of your topic. Maybe we have a specific theme for our topic. It doesn't have to be by weeks. We can use emojis for that as well. If it doesn't come up right away, I already copied it. If I go back to rename and place it where I want and hit control V for paste, it will then show up. Emojis can also help in directions. When you're giving directions, a lot of kids just read right through them or just glance or not read them at all. But if you go ahead and insert an emoji into your directions, it may catch their attention a little bit more and have them stop and read. Next, checklists. When you go to create, material is one of the options that Google Classroom gives us. But really, what do we use when it comes to material? Well, I think one of the cool things that you can do is at the top of your Google Classroom, give a checklist for the week. You can add it into your week or just keep it at the top of your classroom so that students know to look at it and they know exactly what they need to do. You can use the numbers that are in the emojis that come up on the side to incorporate in your checklist. Next, video announcements. If you have the Google Classroom app on your phone, you're going to be able to easily add video announcements for your students. The first thing that you're going to do is record a video of yourself, just like this. I can record a video and I can tell my students exactly what I want them to do. I'm going to hit stop. And then I'm gonna go into the Google Classroom app and go to the correct classroom. When I go down to classwork, I can then go down to the plus sign in the bottom right hand corner on my smartphone and I can choose material. I can then go ahead and use my emojis right from my phone. And then in the top bar, I can go ahead and attach a file. I can use the camera if I wanted to do it straight from there, or I can pick a photo. And from here, I can see my recents. 
and choose that video. It compresses the video and then attaches it. If I'm ready to assign it, I can go ahead and hit the paper airplane and hit send. And now my new video announcements are going to show up. If I refresh my classroom, you can see it shows up at the top with my emoji as well. Students then are able to click on it and play your video announcements. Next, archiving. Elementary teachers and even high school teachers and, well, middle school teachers, Google Classrooms can get really crowded with assignments. Kids get confused. What am I supposed to really do? But there is no archive ability inside of Google Classroom yet. But there is an idea and a workaround that we can use. Let's set up a Google Classroom where we're going to archive assignments. Now, when we do this, I want you to remember that grades can't be a factor here. If you're gradebook and you want to keep grades with a particular assignment, you are not going to want to use this method. If grades are irrelevant for certain assignments, or maybe you've already submitted report cards for that quarter, this may be a workaround to clean up your Google Classroom just a little bit. You're going to go in and you're going to create a new classroom. And I named mine the year and archived assignments. And when I go into this classroom, you're going to see that there is no classwork. But if I have an assignment from my other Google Classroom that I want to get rid of, I want to delete, but I want to make sure that I keep an archive of it for maybe future years, I can go down to reuse post. And now I can search when I go to the correct class. I can search for the assignment that I want to go ahead and reuse. So I'm going to choose it. I'm going to reuse it. It's going to make all new copies of the attachments for me. And I'm going to, just because I don't want to assign it, I'm going to save it as a draft. Once that's saved, it's going to save it exactly where it was. It was in week two. That was the topic and it was English. And that's what it was in the other classroom. So the topic comes over with the assignment. If you don't want that, you can get rid of the topic altogether. But I find it's a nice way to remember where and when you taught something from previous years. Now if I want to delete this assignment to clean up my current classroom, I can go over, I can click delete, and all grades and comments will also be deleted. So that was that piece that I wanted you to be aware of. Make sure that this isn't going to be something where you delete it and you lose all the grades and you didn't realize that. You will lose all comments and all grades for this assignment for this particular year. But if you want to clean it up, hit delete and it will be gone. You now have it in your archive classroom to use for the future, but it is now gone for your students. And these may be some out-of-the-box thinking ideas that you may use for your Google Classroom.